What's up, guys? Michael Matthew here, LA Sparks Weekly. It is time tip off week. It the Sparks time. are back. Of course, I'm here with DJ. The Sparks are back tonight. I'm we, so happy. Hey, Can we you were tell? excited about the preseason games. Yes. Now it's the real games that are going to begin. They got the Atlanta Dream tonight. Well, what's your excitement level at? I know it's crazy. First of all, the vibes are different here, okay? We yeah. are in Long Beach. my first time in Long Beach. They mm -hmm. got a little section for the uh, season ticket holders here <laughs> with some nice libations and some drinks. The vibes are good. Moski yeah. is in the corner. I'm feeling very positive about this matchup. Mm -hmm. Even with the uh, press conference, Coach Miller seems like he's already got that defense in mind, so I yeah. know that good basketball is going to be played And today. they're here at the Pyramid. Yeah. You know, I'm an alumni of tell, this great tell campus. Us about it. Tell so us about it. it's a legendary building, one of the few pyramids in the world, you know. So shout out to Lone Beach. But it's about sports basketball. We get to see these ladies play some real hoops. Cameron Brink, it is the start of her and Rakia Jackson's career as pros. Yep. Well, what's, what's, what do you, how do you think they're feeling right now? I, I'm, thi I'm thinking they're very excited. Looking at them two preseason games, they're going to do well. I'm thinking each of them going to drop 10 points. Okay. Just off the sheer excitement of okay. it. Okay. I'm thinking Cameron Brink going to swat at least yeah. two into the stands. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's good vibes, and they'll have some good offensive scoring here today. What about you? Man, I'm happy to see the one. You guys can't see her, but she's behind us, Lexi Brown. She's back, ready to go, fully healthy, ready to get her buckets. Because last year, yeah. at some point, she looked like an all-star player. Yep. And Lexi is back to show everybody that she is that all-star caliber player. It's a new look team, new new energy around the team. It is going to be fun to watch. But hey, coach is excited as well yep. for the first game of the regular season. So of course, we got to send you to the pregame post uh, press conference with Coach Miller. Kurt, Kurt Sandoval from KBC, ready or not, here they come. Uh, can you speak to uh, your expectations, not just for tonight, but this season, and what you're most uh, excited and or anxious about. Yeah, excited to get going. Um, clear direction now uh, with our roster and our direction of uh, our team uh, with the youth movement to lottery picks. Um, so we aren't putting any ceilings on, on this um, season. You know, we want to try to get better day by day. Wins and losses take care of itself. If you have great culture and you stick to game plans and you continue to build your offense and defensive identity. So I'm excited to see where we're at. We, we all realize the shortest training camp in the history of our league, so we haven't had very many practices. Uh, so there's twofold. We're excited tonight for the Atlanta game and our prep for Atlanta. At the same time, we've got to continue to keep building for these 40 games not easy to put together the entire packages that you want in 11 days for a 40 game season but um love where we're at chemistry wise and excited to see how we play tonight against atlanta yeah bill flash the early times so is there anything specific you're looking for from your team tonight i mean with the side the obvious that's that the win yeah, for us tonight, offensively, Bill, is definitely are we sharing it and moving it. Uh, we had high turnovers the first two exhibition games. We'd love to cut down on our turnovers tonight. Uh, but what's been, been defined by this team in these 11 practices, not playing through one person, ball swinging from side to side, we're moving defenses, uh, and I love how we're sharing it. So I want to keep that up. We want to play higher tempo this year than we did last year. We want to get out and transition. That all helps if we can get some stops. Defensively, we were the best analytic team after the All-Star break last year. We know we've lost a couple talented individual defenders, but we want to get back to that, that defensive identity. And it will really be challenged tonight, Bill, with two incredible wings and then some low post options for them, certainly, four perennial All-Stars now. Uh, in that starting lineup for Atlanta. But uh, look forward to it. We've been good on the boards these first two exhibition games. It will be challenged by Parker and, and, and certainly Tina Charles tonight. Can we have another good rebounding night? DJ from Infanity TV, you kind of touched on my, my question there because in the first two preseason games, the team did exceptionally well on the defensive rebounds defensive rebounding. Is that a part of your strategy here today against the Atlanta team? You know, obviously one and done is going to be really important for us. We've added length, you know, analytically, even with that number one analytic defensive team after the All-Star break last year, we were last in the league in rim protection. So Cameron brings rim protection. Rakia is much longer than people realize. 6'7", Lee LaRue is on the team now. So we've really added some length. We played without wings last year. Our two wings were out for the season at the three position. So we have a length at the three position. So 
What we lost in individual maybe ball defenders, we've added in length, rim protection, and, and maybe be a dominant rebounding team. We'll be challenged tonight. People are seeing those stats those first two nights. You know, can we have another rebounding night like those first two exhibition games? Thank you. Coach, John W. Davis with the Southern California News Group. How do you balance the long-term picture that you got some players, it's their first time playing or just their second year playing in this league with the idea that every time you step on the court over those 40 minutes, you're trying to win these games and you have veterans on the team that know how to do that. Yeah, first, you know, tonight, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie playing in your first ever WNBA game like Cam and Rakia will be, or you're a seasoned veteran. Everybody's going to have nerves tonight. It's my 22nd year as a head coach uh, at the highest levels, and I will have nerves tonight. So we've got to play hard out of the gate. You'll see five minutes into the game, it'll look like elephants jumped on everybody's back on both teams. <laughs> the game will eventually settle in. We'll get into you know more of a flow after the initial burst. And, and we know this league, the big thing for the young players, and, and the veterans were trying to talk about this at, at Shoot Around, it's games of run in this league. And it, can we shorten their runs and have our own runs? But we can't be discouraged. This is a league of runs, and we've got to look for opportunities to have our own tonight. Jim Alexander from Southern California News Group. Obviously, you're excited about your team and what your team can do, but is there a sense of excitement league-wide and, and where this league is and where it's going? Yes, the viewership is an all-time high for women's basketball. We've known, us involved in women's basketball for our lives, uh, have known how great our product is, and uh, it, now we're getting exposure to new fans and to the collegiate fans are following the WNBA. This league is the best women's basketball league in the world, and uh, it, the, the products that we put on the floor is simply amazing considering the amount of time we have to practice. Um, and so I'm really, really excited for our league-wide. Um, it was fun, you know, I had anxiety watching those other four games last night, you know, like it was just, it was fun to see. And uh, it should be a really special year for the WNBA. Hey Coach Jackie, we're talking about TV. I, you spoke about the shortest, <laughs> you spoke about the short, shortest practice in history. Can you talk about how they're learning to trust each other and they're building their chemistry? Yeah, the veterans are doing a great job, and uh, and that we keep talking to the young players to have grace for themselves and grace for each other. Um, you know, it, we are throwing a ton at them. Um, it's new terminology, it's new schemes, it's new rules. I mean, people forget that our game is completely different than the collegiate game, and they will be five days into practice and go, "Oh, really? You know, that that's even a rule." So. There's so much learning going right on right now. They're a bit overwhelmed, but that's league-wide. Um, and so our veterans take a big ownership in that and helping our young players. Our, our coaching staff is doing a tremendous job watching film as much as possible with our players. They're long days out of the gate here, but uh, excited to get going and always up for, you know, the competitiveness in this league is, is so high. So we'll see a lot of competitiveness, even through maybe some you know, play that's uh, a little bit inconsistent tonight, you'll see two very passionate teams. Ray Moraldi, Sporting Tribune. Uh, Coach, uh, what's going to be the focus defensively considering they have three all-stars, and you mentioned Tina Charles, and there's also Crystal Dangerfield, Haley Jones. What's going to be the focus? Yeah, defense? thank you for that anxiety <laughs> question. Um, yeah, obviously, um, again, to me, are we sticking to our game plan? Uh, very much us. We want to try to dictate and disrupt. And if we can dictate and disrupt their offensive flow, it would be very important to us. Analytically, those first two exhibition games, we weren't as good in the first eight seconds of the shot clock as we were late. What Atlanta is really talented at, last year number one in the league in pace, number one in the league at fouls drawn and getting to the foul line. So we've got to get back and guard these first eight seconds, get them into their dribble drive actions, their dribble drive offense. They run less ball screens than any other team in the league where our league defensively finds some disruption possibilities. You can't find that uh, with Atlanta. So 
not only the first eight seconds going to be important tonight as you guys watch and analyze, the last eight seconds where they have tremendous one-on-one -on -one players, can we sit in a stance in the, or their spacing that they create for each other, and can we get one-on-one -on -one stops? That's how you can beat Atlanta. Teams that can't get one-on-one -on -one stops late in the shot clock, Atlanta finds ways to win. Coach, Fred Osmond is here with the Sporting Tribune. You know, looking at what De'Ara Hamby did for you last season and for the whole team and seeing her development so far right now, you know, it's, it's a totally different player from last season. What have you loved so much about her um, at this point? Her confidence, you know, right now, again, uh, truly remarkable. You know, played an only, only Sparks player to play in all 40 games last year right after the birth of her, uh, of her son. So an incredible, inspirational story, everything that she dealt with, with the unexpected trade, and everything else that only our family knows about that De'Erica dealt with last year was, is truly remarkable. But to watch her come in with a confidence this year, uh, Azaree's injury was a gut punch to us leading into this you know, training camp. And so she knew that she had to provide even more leadership and the confidence that she's playing with, the confidence that she has. Remember, she's a two-time Six Player of the Year award winner. She's a former WNBA All-Star. She has won a championship. And she is really relished taking on that I need to be a go-to player for this team. And I just love her confidence. We're going to keep pouring into her. And, uh, and hopefully that will you know, help her have another WNBA All-Star year. Last question. Coach, uh, Mike L. Matthew here at Family TV. So now you get to match up against, you know, your former guard, uh, Jordan Canada here. Um, just what type of test do you think that's going to be for your guards uh, tonight? And what are you hoping that they can take away from learning and going against a talent like Jordan? Yeah, we have had plenty of time to guard Jordan. Uh, Jordan is obviously out for tonight with an injury, so we won't get to see Jordan. We will celebrate her return. She had a remarkable year last year for us, and uh, really, really special to see her at shoot around and wish her well, and uh, wish her back from her injury quickly. Uh, but tonight, we get a different type of challenge at the point guard position in Haley Jones at 6-1. Uh, is one of the tallest and biggest point guards in our league. And so uh, what they don't have in Jordan in the ball hawking defensively, now you have a 6'1 point guard that uh, is a factor she can get into the paint. So different challenge, different players, but uh, a big welcome back to Jordan tonight into the L.A. area. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back in Fanity TV. You already know me as DJ, and I'm here with Michael Matthew. Y'all just saw what Coach Miller said. Yep. Michael, what are you thinking just off of his basic analysis of the, the matchup today? He likes some things that he saw in the preseason with his team, and he's hoping that it can carry over so that they can start off the season well. Uh, you asked a question in the press conference there where you talked about rebounding. He feels that's where a big advantage for this team is. And that's what Cameron Brink uh, comes in with her ability to rebound and blocking shots. They're looking for things to be different in the paint. Yep, and we're a much taller team this year. That's another thing that Coach, Co Coach Kurt Miller said is they're a lot taller. So I think Rakia is also going to uh, grab some boards. Yeah. Erica Hamby has been playing yeah, exceptionally playing well. Out. So I'm excited to see how this offense and this defense will shake out against an Atlanta team that shoots really heavily from a three-point range. Yeah, Atlanta's coming in. They also got some new talent there to help out uh, Ryan Howard. It's going to be some good basketball. Yep. But just talking about the Sparks, you mentioned De'Erica. She looked like the best player through the first uh, few games in there in the preseason. I want to see who's going to carry over. We talked about it on the weekly show that, hey, who are going to be the players that's going to step up and be the leading scorers for this team? I think it's going to be De'Erica. I think it's going to be Lexi. But who else? So I I'm excited to see the guard play, yep. to see what uh, the ladies, Lasia, um, and uh, those players are going to Aerie. do. Yeah, I Aerie think Aerie as well. is also is going to lead the second string. So yep. we got a lot of exciting basketball. So y'all stay tuned to the show, y'all. Keep it locked here. And make sure you subscribe to us on Instagram because you already would have seen the press conference, okay? Because <laughs> we're going live and we're sending this straight there. So make sure y'all stay tapped in on Infanity TV. Thank you.
We are the dance crew for the LA Sparks. Pretty fire, I'm not gonna lie. So you guys should like come to a game and see us on the court. Follow us through our whole journey. Cause we're a vibe to be around. Um, let's see, I've been with the Sparks for about 10 years now. Started off dancing, then managing, and now I'm directing. So it's like a whole full circle moment. I love what I do, passionate about what I do. Y'all should come, stick around with us, and see what we do. So follow me, follow me. <laughs> Second team foul. And that's a strike. Let's hear it for De'Erica Hamby. This is some of the crew. It's only half the crew. So you have some Sparks crew, some old school crew. We're about to go out, do like a timeout lights moment. You know, light up the court. So yeah, come to the side. Watch us today. Sparks fans, it didn't go as well as we hoped, but it's just game number one. The Sparks go down 92-81 against the Atlanta Dream. The ladies played well. It was a great game, the great atmosphere. Oh, man. Magic Johnson in the building. Oh, man. Kim K in the building. Yes. It, it, it was a good time. Michael Matthew, of course, here with DJ LA Sparks Weekly. Yep. What was your thoughts on tonight's game? Just not only what you saw on the court, but just the atmosphere you saw tonight. You know I always start with the vibe check, and the vibes in here were <laughs> immaculate. Straight 10 out of 10. The music was vibing. Yeah. Celebrities coming through. Leslie was there. Jamel Hill was there. We saw uh, Jordan Liggins uh, also from uh, the Cheryl Swoops podcast yep. as well, another WNBA podcast. Yep. It was The vibes was good, and then the game was tied all the way into the fourth quarter, yes. so you know it was exciting. Yes. So that's my favorite 
favorite part of today was just mm -hmm. starting with such a bang and being competitive. Yeah, you had some great basketball on the Sparks, and you had De'Erica carrying over from her play in the preseason. 20 points, 14 rebounds. Uh, Kia Nurse, who performed and did Killed her thing, 20-plus yeah. points. A triple-double from Malaysia. Clarendon, her first triple-double of her career yep. uh, with some good basketball and you know Cameron Brink the rook uh, she had her struggles with, with she had like 11 points like though yeah she she did her job yep. um, you know so what, what was your thoughts on the performance now on the court on the court, uh, I think, let's start with the rookies. I think the okay. rookies did an amazing job just yeah. keeping up with the speed of it. They really didn't look that tired out there. Mm -hmm. They did, they took a lot of that preseason things that they learned and brought it to the game, right? Yeah. We did want to see a little bit more offense, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. We'll pump our brakes. Of course, Kia Nurse, I didn't know that girl was that lethal from the no, three. Hey, she was hooping. She was yeah. hooping, hooping. So I think a lot of those places where we missed Lexi, we saw Kia. So yeah. I was excited to see that we did have that offensive momentum on the post and in the wing. And I'm, I'm happy that you brought up Lexi because she had her struggles. But it's just good to see her back dealing with everything she dealt with when it came to health last season. Uh, but this game came down yep. to the fourth quarter. That 9-0 run end up being the difference for the Atlanta Dream. So you saw a lot of positive things from the Sparks. But don't just listen to us. Yep. Uh, listen to Coach. Listen to a couple of the players as they talk to us after the game. All right, Kurt, uh, just, just overall thoughts on what your team showed you in game one here. Um, <clears throat> super proud. Uh, first night out after 11 practices uh, with, I think, five new players, half, almost half the team with new, pl with new players this year. Um, you know, our starters just played incredibly hard. And, uh, again, big night by a lot of them. Lex, uh, Lazy Clarendon with a triple-double tonight, uh, absolutely you know, came in and was great on the boards as a point guard and distributed and just played fearlessly and relentlessly. You know, uh, Kia Nurse with a bunch of threes tonight. Dierka Hamby with a monster uh, monster double-double. So I thought we did a lot of really good things um, at times. I, I take it as my responsibility that a lot of the starters got tired at the end of the third quarter all at one time, and I had to substitute more players at one time in the start of the fourth quarter than I would have liked. And that 9-0 run to start the fourth quarter ultimately was a hard, um, a hard situation to dig out of. But we never quit. We really battled and showed our scrappiness that we're going to be defined by this year. Um, and it's a great learning lesson for our young post players and in. Um, Cam and Rakia to go against um, one of the best ever in, in Tina Charles tonight. And obviously she had a really efficient uh, big night for for them. And so overall, it, it, it is a um, disappointing result because I thought we played well enough in stretches to win this game. But what a great start in a lot of ways on what we're trying to build as a culture and how we're playing and sharing it and moving it and uh, playing faster. And so, uh, something to grow from tonight. Coach Edwin Garcia. Coach Appeal, you mentioned that fourth quarter run and, and having to improve in that area. Besides just not scoring there, what was happening that Atlanta was doing offensively to kind of get in a role there and kind of break that even you know game that was happening in the first, second, and third quarter? Yeah, I thought, uh, you know, I thought our offensive inefficiency to start the fourth quarter was as much contributing to our defense. Um, we did not get any paint touches early in the fourth quarter, and we were we were stuck at the arc and really around the perimeter, didn't have a lot of movement with that group. That offensive inefficiency allowed them to get out and transition and move us and, and play off of missed baskets where maybe your defense and your schemes aren't as on point. Um, and then they went at us inside early um, in that in that fourth quarter. So, again, it was a tough 9-0 uh, run to start. I take that my responsibility because we were playing a lot of the second unit all together instead of sprinkled in with some of the starters who had really good nights. Coach, Franco Cervantes is here with the Sporting Tribune. You know, despite the loss, um, what are some of the positives you take out of this game? You know, I thought we played really hard. Um, I thought we were really scrappy. Um, that is a team on paper that most predict have a chance to be a top four team. Um, and so we didn't back down. Uh, they're big. 
Um, they have good versatility offensively because they have two outstanding wings who can really score the ball. But then they can always throw it to Tina and, and Cheyenne. So um, they are, are really, really deep in their starters with weapons. So, But I loved our scrappiness. I loved our tempo for the most part. Uh, I, see, I think you see that we can be a better three-point shooting team than we were last year overall. Um, we did not have a good night at the foul line, but um, just so much positives. You know, you got to take away in a build year, you got to take away the positives, and I just thought we played so hard. Coach, um, Cameron Brink had 11 points, four rebounds, two assists, in her, or two blocks in her baby, but she also ran a little bit of foul trouble early. What did you see from her specifically that you guys missed th throughout the stretches that she had to sit down? Yeah, again, you know, Cam, you know, Cam has um, has to find a way to stay out of foul trouble because she's so important to what we're doing. She helps spread the floor offensively. She's a really good distributor of the ball at, at, with a six-five uh, person, so she can create opportunities for her teammates. Defensively, she's great rim protection, but when you play three minutes, you know, in the first you know stretch and have to sit down. Um, you know, that's that's a big blow. So we're, we're a 6'6 six, six player not with us right now in Azaray Stevens. So it even magn you know, is more magnified how much she has to stay on the court. But a really good debut. You know, she battled through that. She, you know, battled her emotions of being frustrated, of being in foul trouble, and, you know, put together a nice second half. So that, that stat line for a rookie you know, for, with less than 20 minutes in the game is really solid start for her. We just got to keep her on the floor longer. Yeah, can you evaluate Rakia's debut? Yeah, Rakia you know, is a really um, talented offensive player. I know that it, she wasn't as efficient as she's capable. She left a couple shots short that she's, you know, capable of making, but she can find her own offense. You know, that's what's special about her. When plays break down, people take you out of your – your system, she can go make plays, and uh, that's not common, you know, with every everybody around the league. So I'm excited about it. You know, be a little bit more efficient. And again, I think it was a great learning lesson to have to guard the Tina Charles and the Cheyenne Parkers of the world your first game. Now she's rewarded, and she might have to go guard Asia Wilson. <laughs> hey, uh, coach, it's EJ from Infinity TV. Erin McDonald also had a really great game. Can you talk about how you, you plan to use her in the future uh, for rotations to add to the offense? Yeah, again, I, I, again, we can't play our starters that many minutes for 40 games, and we know the cadence of games that are upcoming and how difficult this Olympic year is with our schedule. Um, our starters have to be off the floor more, but they gutted it out tonight. Um, Aerie is a change of pace guard. She's a one-two punch to Lasia. She's a different look at the point guard position, obviously smaller, but can really keep our tempo up with that next unit. Plus, she's a really talented shooter from the arc. She's been a scorer since her college days. She didn't get that going tonight. She was 0 for 3 from the arc, but you're going to see nights where Aerie makes two, three, you know, or more threes. So, we look for that, but she's got to be a pest on the ball where she might not be as big and have the physicality that Lasia has. She can give us a different look. Um, uh, Coach Michael Matthew from Eternity TV. Uh, just looking at Lexi, just what's your thoughts on her performance tonight and just how happy are you to see her, you know, back on the floor uh, playing for you guys? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I'm bullish on saying that I think Lexi was off to an um, all-star year last year before her illness. It's great to have her back first and foremost gratitude and appreciation that way you never take for granted being able to be on the court so you know having Lexi Brown healthy is um, a lot of fun because you can do a lot of uh, you know interesting scheming offensively with her skill set the one thing that's great is Lexi had a windy path you know she's finally found a home and she is a legit go-to scorer now in this league but she's treated like it so one of the things that Lexi has earned is earned the, the, the reputation now that she's the Sparks go-to player. And with that, you get to get the best defender. So, you know, again, she saw that out of the gate. The best defender was on her the whole night, really face guarding and top blocking most of the night. And Lexi's got, we got to use Lexi efficiently as a screener to get her open. We've got to use her in different ways. And she can't get frustrated because she has earned the right to be guarded by the opponent's best player every night. 
that's the great thing that she's put herself in position. But with that, you know, comes, you know, obviously the maturation of understanding now. Every night, the defensive schemes are going to be geared towards her. So I'm excited to work with her through the process, not only physically, but mentally. Last question, John. Coach Johnny B. Davis, Southern California News Group. Can you talk a little bit more about the vets, in particular, Kia, Dierica, and Leja? All really seem like they had excellent games, to be frank, for what they all contributed. And, you know, the the impact that you feel like they want to make this year because, you know, vets always have something to prove, especially on this team. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe all but Lexi were 50% or better from the field. We made threes. They played hard. They were scrappy. They didn't back down. I thought that starting unit was terrific, um, you know, and so, you know, I, I, I got the stat sheet late. I don't – I haven't added it up, but I got to believe that they shot well over 50% as a unit. Or, or thereabouts, and so they also had an efficient night. So I, I just, that group has had a chemistry um, really quickly, and uh, we're gonna bring that bench along. The bench is better than that they played tonight, and they know it, we know it, um, we have confidence in them, but really proud of that starting unit. Um, they've all been asked to take on a more prominent role uh, with this team, and they're embracing it. And, you know, I, I can't wait to keep working with that starting unit. Thank you, Kirk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. disappointing result but a great start and when you look at what you guys accomplished as starters as veterans how did you walk off the floor feeling after this game to Erica double double key I think 23 24 points I would say confident you know it was fairly a, I mean it's a new group and no knock at Atlanta they play well but uh, we pretty much have a new core um, and to see what we've been able to accomplish with obviously a short training camp I think we're all optimistic um, and excited about the season, you know, it's 40 games, and this is just one. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, similar sentiments there. And, um, you know, if we play with that energy and that intensity and, you know, a couple things bounce our way, a couple of those runs go our way a little bit differently, you know, early in that fourth probably, um, you know, we win that game. And with that energy and that effort and the way that the chemistry we played with today, we're going to win a lot of games in this league. Brittany, Erica, um, you know, today the tandem with you and, and Cam out there in, in the post, you know, she found you a couple times, you know, down low. So what kind of chemistry did you see between the two of you there? And how, how do you kind of see that tandem working out as the season goes on? Yeah, we just got to keep her on the floor. But um, we we spent a lot of time at three on three. We were a week, we were together a week in Massachusetts. Um, and that game is very, like, fast, and you got to read off each other very quickly. So um, being on that team with her, I think, helped. Um, but we're both so versatile, I think it's going to work out in the end for us. Hi, Amanda Scarlock, Elite Sentinel. Um, 
Leisha scored a triple double. I just kind of want to get your thoughts just on her her fight during this game and how quintessential she is. Well, I think Lay is obviously going to do. Uh, we're going to ask a lot of them to come out there and you know play hard for us, get us in the offenses, get people in the places and positions where they can be successful. Um, be t her toughness is something that we rely on a ton, especially against other point guards. And I think just the way that they played today was kind of. You know what I I played with Lane in New York, so that's kind of what I've come to know. Um, and you know, impacting the game in a number of different ways. I think it was a quiet triple double, maybe because the stats weren't all over the boards out there, but uh, did their job incredibly well, and that's what we need from them. Ron Garcia, so Shapiro, my question is for you, uh, Kia. Um, the team kind of struggled there in that fourth quarter and didn't score until you hit that corner three um, around the six minute mark. Uh, what happened that Atlanta kind of got a run there, and what can this team learn moving forward to kind of avoid those fourth quarter pitfalls? Yeah, I mean, basketball is a game of runs, um, and I think we just ultimately got, I think it was like a 9-0 run in that situation. Um, kind of just wasn't going. We didn't hit enough shots in that situation, then defensively didn't get stops. And what we rely on a lot is our defense, and because we're pretty smart basketball players, the IQ on the defensive end is there, and we're long and athletic, and we can kind of congest and disrupt. We didn't do as much disrupting in that kind of phase there. So it'll be something we look at on, on film just to say where could we have been better in that situation, knowing that that's something that you can fix. It wasn't an energy or an effort thing. It was probably just a little bit more positioning defensively. Kia, we talked uh, at practice a couple days ago. Uh, with a season debut like this with a new team, do you feel like this shows yourself that you're back? Uh, it gives myself some confidence. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that was pretty good. A couple miss uh, bad turnovers in there. But other than that, um, and some missed dumb passes to Derek, I, I apologize. Um, but I do think for me personally, uh, it's been a long road, a long journey coming back from the ACL. And uh, last year, mentally, I just didn't feel like myself. And uh, this is a nice place to start. Um, you know, I think I said to my partner before the game, I was like, I just want to make all my family and everyone that was around me proud. And he was like, you need to make yourself proud. And, um, you know, it was a loss, so it's not as exciting. But it's a, a proud moment to be able to play, feel more like myself out there. Hey, Dierica, Jackie with Jackie Ray TV. For you personally, we know how last season was for you, but now you seem very settled and very confident on the floor. Can you kind of walk us through how this season is different from last season for you personally? Uh, I just came into camp very clear-minded and, and had very clear intentions on what I wanted this season to look like for me personally and what I wanted to help this team do. And uh, I think at first people probably were like, yeah, you're fucking crazy, but like, <laughs> um, I think the consistency that I've shown in camp in the preseason in this first game, I think they kind of know I mean business now. Um, so, yeah. I didn't get crazy. <laughs> I didn't get crazy. <laughs> I got very intentional. <laughs> uh, Michael Matthew and Fanny TV. This is for both of you ladies. Just, you know, this is such a big WNBA season with all of the love and uh, everyone spreading the word with, you know, big time players coming in. You guys having two top five picks in here. Just how was the energy tonight? Just before the game, you know, with you guys and then coming in and seeing the crowd and the turnout that you had today? Honestly, um, considering this isn't our home gym and you had to take a little bit of a drive to get here, the energy was incredible. You know, they showed out, our fans came out, and um, I've played against LA's fans quite a few years now. They're tough to play against, really fun to play for. Um, and I think that was the best part about it. There's a, a huge energy around women's basketball right now and, and the conversations and the support of all these different players. And obviously there's a lot of new fans too. Um, so it's great to have them out here. And even if they're in the fans, I'm sure for our players that have been here, there's a lot of familiar faces, but all the new faces, welcome to the Sparks family and we'll put on a show all season. Thank you ladies. Thank, Thank you guys. All right, y'all, we just heard from Coach and the players in a press conference. Now we are going to talk a little bit more about our players of the game. Now, yeah. we talked about what we saw on the court. We talked about the vibes that we saw. Michael, who is your player of the game today? Man, I got to give love to Elijah Clarendon, man. First ever triple-double. Yep. If you play basketball, uh, you know getting a triple-double is so, so hard. For her to do that, she played great basketball today. It just sucks that they came up short. Yep. Shout-out to Elijah. You yep. know, keep, keep hooping out there. Definitely. And my player of the game, I'm going to give it to Kia. Okay. I like her energy. I like how she was coming off them screens. Yeah. I like the catch and shoot. I do think she can do a lot more offensively yep. with, with creating her own shots. But I think as the game develops and they get more comfortable with each other, we'll see more of that. Yeah, and Coach has to get this bench together. He played everybody tonight. Yep. But he's going to have to get to his set rotation. Because this isn't the NBA where it's yep. 82 games yep. where you got to you know play a lot of people. You want to play your best nine players. So I'm hoping that 
he's able to fix that when yeah. you have Ray Burrell on the bench. I was going to say. Zaya Cook, who only played six minutes mm -hmm. tonight. You can tell he's trying to figure it out. But yeah. trust what you know. These two yeah. were there last year. They know what it takes. So hopefully he can kind of figure that out with game two uh, that they got coming up soon. Absolutely. So L.A. Sparks fans, make sure you subscribe to L.A. Sparks Weekly on YouTube, on Instagram. Follow yep. us across every platform. You don't want to miss this. We're going to start going live. You want to make sure you catch this footage. And of course, follow us on our socials as well. It's a must. It's a must. <laughs> we got the behind the scenes for you. And we'll catch y'all. What is the next game? Saturday? Saturday, y'all. Sparks, they're going to come back. They're going to bounce back. They're going to take care of y'all, Sparks yep. fan. They're going to get this dub. So I hope you ready for it.